All right, let's finish up chapter 18 with 18.3, the building of the tree of life. The goal is to discuss distinguishing characteristics of the domain and kingdom of living organisms. And the forest side says, hey boy, how you doing? Look at him, Dan. Poor guy's been floating out here for days, but he's just as fat and happy as ever. Survival of the fittest, right? All right. So our objective is to name the six king kingdoms of life as they are currently identified and explain what the tree of life represents. All right. Let's think about it again. The process of, of identifying and naming all known organisms, both living and extinct, is a huge first step toward the goal of systematics. The real challenge, however, is to group, however, is to group everything from bacteria to dinosaurs to blue whales in a way that reflects their evolutionary relationships. Over the years, new information and new ways of studying organisms have produced major changes in Linnaeus's original scheme for organizing living things. During Linnaeus's time, living things were classified as either animals or as plants. Animals were organisms that moved from place to place and used food for energy. This, by the way, is Linnaeus. Plants were green organisms that generally did not move and got their energy from the sun. As biologists learn more and more about the natural world, they realize that Linnaeus's two kingdoms, animal and plant, animalia and plantae, did not reflect the full diversity of life. Classification systems have changed dramatically since Linnaeus's time, and hypotheses about relationships among organisms are still changing today as new data are gathered. This diagram shows some of the ways in which organisms have been classified in kingdoms since the 1700s. You have your plantae and animalia. At first, all microorganisms were placed in their own kingdom named Protista. Right here. Later years, year, yeast, later, yeast and molds, along with mushrooms, were placed in their own kingdom, fungi. Fungi. Later still, scientists realized that bacteria lacked nuclei, mitochondria, and chloroplasts found in other forms of life. All prokaryotes bacteria were placed in yet another new kingdom, Monera. Single-celled eukaryotic organisms remained in the kingdom Protista. This process produced five kingdoms, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, and Animal Animalia. In 1990s, researchers learned that organisms in the kingdom Monaria were actually two genetically and biochemically different groups. The Monarians were placed into two kingdoms called Eubacteria and Archaebacteria. There are now six kingdoms, and there they are. Genetic analysis has revealed that the two main prokaryotic kingdoms are more different from each other than from eukaryotes than previously thought. So biologists established a new taxonomic category, the domain. A domain is a larger, more inclusive category than a kingdom. Under this system, there are three domains, domain bacteria, corresponding to domain eubacteria, domain archaea, corresponding to kingdom archaea bacteria, and domain eukara, corresponding to kingdoms fungi, plantae, animalia, and kingdom protista. Quotes are put around the kingdom Protista, as you can see right here, to indicate that it is not a monophyletic group. Remember, a monophyletic group is a group composed of a collection of organisms, including the most recent common ancestors of all those organisms and all the descendants in the most recent common ancestor. The kingdom Protista does not fit this description. They are kind of like the catch-all of the kingdoms. So name the six kingdoms of life as they are currently identified. The six kingdom sets classification includes the kingdoms of your bacteria, archaea, bacteria, proteas, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Explain what the tree of life represents. So modern evolutionary classification is rapidly changing since with the difficult goal of presenting all life on a single evolutionary tree. The, life, the tree of life shows current hypothesis regarding evolutionary relationships among the taxa within the three domains that you can see here. Domain eukarya, archaea, bacteria. Okay. Their cells have... Um, okay, where was I? <laughs> Members of the domain bacteria are unicellular and prokaryotic. This domain corresponds to the kingdom eubacteria. There are six, 
Their cells have thick, rigid walls that surround a cell membrane and contain a substance known as peptoglycan, which is a polymer consisting of sugars and amino acids that form a mesh-like layer outside the plasma membrane of bacteria, but not archaea, which forms the cell wall. This bacteria are ecologically diverse, ranging from free-living soil organisms to deadly parasites. Some photosynthesize, while others do not. Some need oxygen to survive, while others are killed by oxygen. Domain archaea corresponds to the kingdom of archaea bacteria. Members of the domain archaea are unicellular, see from the picture, and prokaryotic. And they live in some extreme environments like the volcano hot springs that you can see right there, brine pools, very salty pools of water, and black organic mud, totally devoid of oxygen. Many of these bacteria can survive only in the absence of oxygen. Their cells walls lack the peptoglycan, and their cell membranes contain unusual lipids that are not found in any other organisms. The domain eukarya consists of all organisms that have a nucleus. It comprises the four remaining kingdoms of the six-kingdom six system, protista, fungi, plantae, and animalia. Let's look at each one. The kingdom protista has been long viewed as by biologists as a catch-all group of eukaryotes that could not be classified as fungi, plants, or animals. Recent molecular studies and cladistic analysis have shown that the eukaryotic, formerly known as protista, do not form a single clade. Current cladistic analysis divides these organisms into at least five clades. Since these organisms cannot be properly placed into a single taxon, refer to them as protist. Most protists are unicellular, but one group, the brown algae, is multicellular. Some protists are photosynthetic, while others are heterotrophic. Some displayed characteristics that resemble those of fungi, plants, or even animals. Very interesting group, just a diverse catch-all group. Fungi. The members of the kingdom fungi are heterotrophs with cell walls containing chitin. Most fungi feed on dead or decaying organic matter. They secrete digestive enzymes into their food source, which break the food down into smaller molecules. The fungi then absorb these smaller molecules into their bodies. <laughs> Mushrooms and other recognizable fungi are multicellular, like the ghost fungi that you see here. Some fungi, yeast for example, like you see there also, are unicellular. Plantae. Members of the kingdom plantae are multicellular, have cell walls that contain cellulose, and are autotrophic. Autotrophic plants are able to carry on photosynthes photosynthesis using chlorophyll. Plants are non-motile, meaning they cannot move from place to place. The entire plant kingdom is, a, is the sister group to the red algae, which are proteist. The plant kingdom, therefore, includes the green algae, along with mosses, ferns, cone-bearing plants, and flowering plants. Members of the kingdom Animalia are multicellular and heterotrophic. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Most animals can move about, at least for some of part of their life cycle. There is an incredible diversity within the animal kingdom, and many species of animals exist in nearly every part of the planet. Subjective so 2 was to explain what the tree of life represents. The tree of life shows current hypothesis regarding evolutionary relationships among the taxa within the three domains of life. So our objectives were to name the six kingdoms of life as they are currently identified. We did that. Explain what the tree of life represents. We just said that. And they both support the goal, which is to distinguish, discuss distinguishing characteristics of the domain and kingdom of the living organisms. And there's a cute little picture for you. Enjoy.